Listen, I don't know what the devil is trying to throw your way, but this thing isn't flesh and blood. It isn't the person that you need to rebuke. It's the spirit operating behind the person that made them do that to you. See, we can downplay the spiritual realm all we want to, but ultimately, that's what rules our entire life. That's why we are seeing evil so prevalent today. The spirit operating behind the government, the spirit operating behind the news stations. And that's why it starts with you and me. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Because one by one, we can start bringing this country back into relationship with God. See, God has been tugging at your heart because he's already sealed you for such a time as this. He doesn't need a bunch of self-righteous people. He doesn't need you to clean up. No, you just need to love him. And then from there, he cleans you up. That you even care at all says something about what spirit is operating your life. But God is saying to someone right here, right now, once you put him first, everything else flows from there. Your wildest dreams come true when you just take that time to make God the priority. Listen, it's not about human traditions. It's not about following 600 rules to maybe be in right standing with God. See, that's the pharisaical way of living, thinking that we can work ourselves into relationship with God. When it is actually pretty simple, when God walks with you and you walk with him, then you are able to feel that peace no matter where you are at, no matter what you are going through. Look, Philippians 4, 7 makes this point. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. See, God is simply trying to restore that relationship from the garden. This means that you will have exactly what you need when you need it. This means that there might be something that God puts off limits. This means that we have to take the time to get to know our creator. But how do we do that if the only time we talk to him is to bless our food or pray for sweet sleep? While I encourage you to do those things, it goes deeper than that. It's that one-on-one -on -one relationship that he's after, not some religious ritual of repetition. Matthew 11, 28 and 29 shows us this. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So I know, I know you feel like, well, this person rejected me, or maybe you're hurt because it didn't work out the way that you wanted it to. Or maybe you find yourself in a season of waiting. Well, this is the season to learn how to put God first in everything that you do. And then one day, come on now, and then one day everything changes. I lift my friend right here up to you. And I pray that they would experience that peace that passes all human understanding. Lord, show them the power in your presence today. Father, fill them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Father God, I ask right now that you would meet them where they are at. Show them that where they may have been rejected, that you accept them. Father, I thank you for restoring that one-on-one -on -one relationship with you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Listen, I don't know who this message is for, and I don't know why God is putting this on my heart, but there is something so much better for you up ahead. But it starts when you make that conscious decision to put God first. When you take on that heart of a servant and make the attempt to help the ones around you. But you might be saying, yes, but how can I help the ones around me? I'm still bleeding myself. God will put someone on your path that you have exactly what they have been praying for. Luke 6, 38 says it like this, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put in your lap. Measure you use, it will be measured back to you. See, God knows you. Actually, I thought about this. If, if God knows us, right? Then he thought about you as he spoke the universe into existence. I mean, really think about that. As he put the solar system into place, he knew the number of hairs that would be on your head. This is why human traditions are almost a mockery to God. 
They actually nullify the word of God. And that's what Jesus says. I just want you to make the relationship with him a priority in your life. Even while you are experiencing pain, even while that anxiety is raging in your mind, it's in that one-on-one -on -one conversation with God that he begins to change you from the inside out. And God wants me to tell you this, you are going to get through this just like you've gotten through everything back there. And I know there's this constant cycle of trying to numb the pain, feeling condemned, and then rinse and repeat. But God isn't saying to be perfect. He is saying just try. Try to put him first in your life. Try to open that Bible. Try to pray. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says it like this. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin. So that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. So look, when God sees you, he doesn't see that issue. He doesn't see that stain because now that you are in Christ, he sees Christ in you. Now, I'm not trying to affirm you in anything and I'm not trying to encourage sin in any way because I absolutely believe in the gift of repentance and I believe in the process of sanctification. But these aren't some doom and gloom terms like some people make them out to be. They are simply gifts that God gives us. But as we walk with God, like Adam and Eve did in that garden, we slowly start becoming like who Christ is. So don't allow the serpent of condemnation to deceive you into thinking that you are anything less. This is why God put this video on your screen, because he's tired of seeing his people being beat down by the evil side to the point of shrinking away from the relationship with him. You know, think about how Jesus would confront the Pharisees over and over. They thought that it was following all these rules and traditions that they were made righteous. They literally thought they could work their way into the favor of God. But what they didn't realize is that their hearts were so far from God. They were worshiping with his mouth, with their mouth, but their hearts were so far. They thought they were doing right by following every law to the T, that they actually missed the Savior that was standing right in front of them. They, they went by the appearance and not by the heart posture. They really believed that what went into the body defiled them. But Jesus told them straight up, nah, bro, you got it wrong. It was actually their pride that defiled them. It was the hate and it was the disdain in their heart that defiled them. They craved power over the people and it became more about how they looked versus helping people come to know God. Look, Matthew 15, 19 and 20 makes this point. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, th false testimony, slander. These are what defile the person. But eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. So what does this mean for you? It means to just walk with God and to allow him to minister to your heart and make what's in your heart everything that he is, which is love, mercy, hope, peace, joy, gentleness, forgiveness. See, this is where it matters. It's in your heart. This is why that situation happened just the way that it did. It was to produce something in you because God uses painful situations to birth the purpose he has for us, which is to worship him and to love him with all of our hearts. But he had to show you that when you put that before him, death is quick to follow. But you, yes, you right there, are already a part of God's family because of what Christ did for you. So it's already done. It's already finished. And Jesus said it on the cross. It is finished. Here at the end of this video, type this. Say, it's settled. I am a child of the Most High God. Listen, I love you so much. I'll see you on the next one.